Hi, I'm Louisa Hamachek from the uh, Columbia River Basin Stewardship Alliance. And um, sometimes I talk to you from uh, the Upper Willamette. And this is a map of the Upper Willamette. And this is my local river map. Louisa drew this. So tell us where we are and show people where you're talking um, right about. Right where all these rivers come together is Eugene. Uh -huh. Right there is Eugene. And various rivers around here. And I live up in the mountains here. And then Cottage Grove is down here. And then goes further up and gets to uh, um, Corvallis and Albany. And then the Sandy Am comes in from over here. And then we're going up the 5 freeway all the way up. And then from there. But no. Yeah. Wait like a minute. We go come backwards. up here and you can see yeah, this is her other map. Back up to the whole map, if you would, so yeah. that we don't start guiding there. We're, and we go like to the middle of Oregon. This is Oregon. To the middle of Oregon is there. Um, That's about where we're at. And from there. And so from from. There to there is the upper Willamette. Right. Right there. And look at the and difference right where Portland there. is. Explain to them what this map is. Louisa, I'd like you to explain both these maps because okay. this is pretty uh, interesting. What is this top map that says nuclear northwest? Okay. What, I, what is this? This is a map of what most people in America refer to as the northwest, but it kind of ends in Canada. That dotted line is Canada. There's the U.S. So here's the top of USA America, and um, here's the northwest, Washington and Oregon were most considered the Northwest, but really it's to the Rocky Mountains. And so it's from the ocean to the Rocky Mountains. And then down here kind of ends in, uh, this is the Snake River, and it comes from Yellowstone. Oh. So when you see Yellowstone, YS is Yellowstone right there. So uh, that's the Rocky Mountains are at a slant. And the, and the Cascades are these mountains, rank, 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 and they're the next bigger ones, and they're at a slant like that, and they come into the uh, uh, Olympics. And then over here is the smaller mountains, is the coast range. It protects us from the tsunami that is expected that will cover everywhere from Arcata to uh, Bellingham, right because here. Because of that fault quake, that yep. quake this, fault that's this, very active. This is the region of the Cascadia subduction zone earthquake. This is the fault right here where so my pen is. Juan de Luca or something like that? No, nope, this is, it's called the Cascadia, so CSZ, the Cascadia subduction zone earthquake. And the fault is here. And it will uh, shove the Pacific Ocean plate underneath the continental plate and that will make this go blip, boom. And when it goes blip, it will slosh within 15 minutes everything it just shook for five minutes up this coast. This will be bigger than anything in historic American times. Oh, five-minute shake, like the Loma Prieta earthquake in um, Santa Cruz in 1989 was... So, but right by just Trojan. A that was 30 seconds. This is going to be five minutes of a strong shake. 9.2 is expected. So, we have... Uh, uh, the, the Red Cross this. disaster assistance team has been told that um, almost all the buildings on the coast here will come down. 50% uh, of the buildings in the Willamette Valley and the bridges will come down. And then the cascades will muffle the effect. But in the last few years, they've discovered um, uh, a fault line that is 10 miles underground that goes under the cascades and reaches to this area, the Columbia Basin. The Columbia Basin is made by the Columbia River coming down from Canada, whipping around the Columbia Basin, and then curving towards the sea, hitting uh, the Cascades, making it through the Cascades in the Columbia Gorge with all the wind. And then it curves from Portland. Here's the big city of Portland. Goes up and curves to the ocean and exits into the ocean here. Here's Hanford Nuclear Bomb Works. And then in the 80s, they ended the bomb works, and they kept the Columbia Generating Station going there as a power generator, which now makes 3 to 4% of the electricity for the yeah. Northwest. The website we could said say 4%. The, power. 4 the Northwest and 10% yeah. for Washington. So you can change the statistics all you want. You could talk about Washington State, and you could say, oh, it makes how much percent? 8%? Or something yeah, but it doesn't. Of, of Washington. Then you could say of the Northwest. So however you want to play with the statistics, it doesn't make enough to warrant the fallout that would happen if this had a Fukushima-like effect. When, from the not earthquake. if, when. Yeah, when, no, but 
the Fukushima-like effect is if this is still running, so it should be sure turned off safely as soon as possible because this is 100 years overdue, this Cascadia subduction earthquake. And um, it now is known that uh, that 10 mile deep thing can reach under the cascades and the cascades will not muffle it and it could reach to here and then it would shake it and break the cooling systems and the um, power would uh, it would have a meltdown and then the meltdown would create hydrogen gas in the containment building which is already going to be broken um, because it's been admitted by the uh, producers and engineers that it's not um, built to the earthquake level that we've now found out it can experience. They say it's now, it can go to a 6.4 now. Yeah, over there, but this is 9.2 and can reach right. over there. This right. and then as well, what Lonnie's talking about is from the city of Yakima right here over to there is like three or four fault lines that were uh, like within a mile of the surface. The other one is a big deep crack, part right. of the plate tectonics. This one is surface ones that translates the big movements. It's very and dangerous. And can be created by, this is Mount uh, St. Helens that already blew and is still gurgling out and blowing. This is Mount Rainier. Is it expected to blow? And it can clog everything with all of its ash, all the cooling, ventilating, blah, blah, blah. It, um, when Mount St. Helens blew, the ash created a mud dam in the Columbia River that was backing up to Trojan Nuclear Power Plant, and unless Navy SEALs got in there and blew it up, which people didn't hear about in the news, it would have inundated the nuclear power plant right wow. there. Wow. And then that would have had a, a meltdown. Say that again? Electric. What happened? When Mount St. Helens blew, down the Thule River came yeah. this uh, pyroclastic mud flow, and it came oh into my here, God. and that went into the Columbia right there. And uh, right there, and then that is was a few miles, uh, like five miles downriver of the wow. Trojan power plant, which was operating then. It has been shut, it has been dismantled, it's been blown up. And But near there is now the nuclear waste that was from all the years of operating this Trojan nuclear power plant, which they're not allowed to move because there's no place in the country to move it to. So uh, that's wow. legal yet. And they keep trying to move it to Hanford, and they moved like the uh, coolant. They moved the reactor core to Hanford. Hanford has like thirteen reactor cores at it. Wow! Hanford has uh, leaking uh, humongous tanks of uh, plutonium goo that is also radioactive. It is radioactive and um, soluble, you know, stinky stuff, bad chemicals, and mixed together which creates a three type of a pollution thing that is going to be released and is already being released and is in a plume that is getting bigger and bigger every year from these leaking stupid tanks that are from the bomb making days. But we can stop the easiest thing by turning off the Columbia Generating Station as soon as safely possible at just like tomorrow start the procedures for shutdown. And um, then uh, all that waste has to stay there because there's no place in the country where it can go to. But aren't they cute? They've created their own little uh, pretend power company that they pre say is a, uh, running it, that is a, a, a collection of uh, rural electric co cooperatives of the Northwest run it, so the government is not liable, I bet, is what they're trying to do. They are not. If you read the Price-Anderson Act, they are not liable. Right, and that is... The operators so it, are liable to a certain extent. Yeah, so really this is a left The taxpayers are going to get all the This brunt. is a U.S. Department of Energy project to make bombs. Now tell me why that is. They've, uh, they've been running it and telling this Energy Northwest company what to do, which is actually really just a little part of Bonneville Power Administration. But what's that? Pretend that's a people's cooperative. That is a part of the U.S. government as well. So the whole thing that runs all the dams of the Columbia River... Um, was a lot of that was to make the power to make. But I mean, just bombs. look at the look at the denial of the level uh, that they say the cancer rates. Like they are denying oh, that. Yeah, let me show you some of that. See, I wrote down Winders because when uh, Hanford was running, they got hold of new Geiger counter things, and they wanted to do experiments. This Nazi type of scientists here were doing experiments all the time, and then they wanted to do one to see how well the new Geiger counter things work. So they installed them all around the northwest, around the Columbia Basin. And during the time where they expected the weather to be what it was, they were hoping it was going that way, I guess. The green run happened where they, did, they released hot, radioactive, very volatile, changing uh, gas of iodine gas. And then they went to see how it went around and how their things measured it well. 
and the, it landed on the grass I'm near Spokane. The city of Spokane is right downwind, and it's 250,000 souls, and on either side are, new, are Indian reservations. The Spokane Indian Reservation, Coeur d'Alene, over here is the Nez Perce Reservation. So it blew this way. There's downwinders with thyroid cancer, and their children, and their wives, and all that are in this area. Almost everybody of this area knows a sibling with thyroid cancer from that experiment they did. And it was only found out from after Hanford got shut down, there was a Freedom of Information Act, a bunch of information that was finally about a year or two later discovered. They referred to the Green Run, and they discovered what it was. And sure enough, in the plume of the radioactive fallout that came of this iodine gas with iodine gas, that was a fallout by itself without particles. Um, the plume of the gas uh, parallels the uh, um, thyroid cancer and the sickness and death that has followed. And thyroid cancer, luckily, you can yank out the thyroid bad one and put in a new one. Yeah, you're pretty much. And so then you take pills. So luckily, that's my one sister that you can had deal thyroid with. cancer. She had that. She mm-hmm. had her thyroid. Right and there. from many of the radioactive um, installations around the country of um, making radioactive materials mm. or operating power plants or making stuff, mm. um, there's people with thyroid cancer. Well, I think it's really outrageous. I'm really angry about the nuclear apologists. That's my thing. Is like I'm not going to allow nuclear apologists on my website. People saying nuclear radiation well, does not what do you cause mean cancer. By a nuclear apolog- okay. By the people who are yeah. saying it's not that harmful, mm-hmm. it's not that it hasn't really killed anybody, which is a big lie. There, we have a cancer epidemic. We, it mm-hmm. came with the nuclear technology that was I'd like denied. To, I, I'd like to take a parallel map, which I'll come back to, to put the Fukushima Daiichi area, because those people are told to be quiet, but we've been right. getting lots of information. This would be a similar story to, and like Kiev for Chernobyl is the same like distance. Like Kiev is about the same as, as how, Spokane. How far is for Hanford. How far is Spokane? I, I can't remember. We've got to remember. Oh, uh, I forget again. We'll get it. More than 100 miles oh, well, here's, now. Here it is. 150 is this distance, so um, three fingers, 100 is 100 miles. It's not the so, third finger, yeah. so it's 100 miles. Or so, okay. Um, from Hanford. And so, but I swear the winds blew, blow generally always from the west to the east, so it'll go to Washington, D.C., it'll go to Chicago. This. this is really awesome, Lou. I am super impressed. Louisa Hamachek is the artist and designer of this map. And I think it is freaking outstanding. And we would love to get this into mass production. So we need somebody who knows how to put this somewhere we, we could start making it readily available, don't you think, Louisa? Yeah, and, and we'll put it out. We'll scan it and put it as a PDF on Lonnie's website. And uh, Nuke Info Project is uh, developing a website to put all this out on. Uh, pay, pay attention to this type of thing. Um, the rivers go in the valleys. So what you see is a valley. The winds will blow like this and hit the Rockies and go down along the Snake River Valley where most of the sugar and potatoes are grown for our country. And so that's going to be fallout on all your food. Would you want this on a T-shirt? Yeah. Because I think that would make a cool T-shirt for the back of a T-shirt, don't you think? But um, let's see. So I want you to think about... Give somebody a back rub just looking at the Hanford website. <laughs> yeah, pointing out all these things. So Sorry. Before we finish about this uh, concept, which oh, is... Oh, we're into 13 minutes, Louisa. Okay. Are you okay with that? Well, let's tidy it up because okay, we don't want to make finish this it up long. now. Are we ready? Are we rolling? Yes. Okay, I'm going to finish it up. Hanford is my biggest concern, and the first thing to do at Hanford is the wind part, the fallout, is to shut down. That's the danger and from a meltdown, so we need to shut that nuke. But let's look at Shut over. down what? The shut Columbia? Shut down the nuke called the Columbia Generating, Generating Station, Station at Hanford. CGS, and if you live in the Northwest, call your utility company and tell them, we don't want the nuclear power from Columbia Generating Station. It's not that helpful. It's not that much beneficial. And I want to point out another thing. Go ahead. We have a Congress in our country, but it's getting to be as if we don't have any power to have our Congress have any power over the Department of Energy. But the Congress must oversee the Department of Energy, and this must be shut down by our Congress. So you must 
hold your Congress accountable to not be chicken, to uh, design what happens for the safety of all the people, and not be pushed around by the military to told that we don't have any information, we can't tell you anything because we have nuclear materials and it's sensitive about strategic things and the uh, terrorists. I don't care. I don't want that thing running anymore. I want it turned well, off. Well, Louisa, this gets into the IAEA and the NRC. They What is IAEA? The International Atomic Energy Agency. Okay. They run the entire fucking world, and they're... Right. they're don't talk off camera. Excuse my language. Yeah. And, uh, no, I don't care about that, but I, what I care about is um, just to get a roundup of the nuclear Northwest on this video, and we'll get back to you on each of those other things separately. We're going to try to do short videos so that you can s focus, but... Um, be aware that there's downriver problems, like this goo coming from Hanford goes to uh, uh, these towns that, that irrigate their uh, fruit that you eat. So check out where your fruit comes from, and, um, and all along the Columbia, and down to here, and then clams come from all over here, and fish, salmon and stuff, don't eat it. Anywhere's downriver of Hanford. It's already leaking. That's bad. But I want to talk to you about fallout because it will blow generally across America. Okay, so let's stop this. We're at 1602. So I'm going to stop and we'll start this again. We'll talk to you in a minute, you guys. Ciao. Okay, hi, YouTubers. This is Lonnie Clark again. That's Fart. And we are here with Louisa Hamachek. Hi. And she's explaining the fallout. We had a big, long video going, and we're just going to make another short one. Mm -hmm. on the how long is this going to be five minutes five minutes okay well we'll i'll keep track of the time okay so um here we have the northwest and this is nuclear northwest my biggest concern is that hanford a nuclear power the power plant still operating at hanford nuclear bomb works it's called the columbia generating station that it should be shut down because it's in a fault line fault zone of earthquakes and now we found out about quite a number of new ones that make it very dangerous to operate any longer discussed in our last video yeah and you and if this has a an earthquake effect of breaking it and the uh, cooling system doesn't work, then the meltdown will create a uh, collection of hydrogen gas that will explode, can explode inside of the containment building and shattering it, which might already be broken. And then, um, at any rate, this can be as was in Fukushima and a number of the power plants and with the waste storage areas, um, scattering fallout of radioactive particles of cement and other things and the uh, uh, highly radioactive parts of the reactor core into the air. The predominant winds blow towards Spokane, but the northwest has Rocky Mountains that hold it in, but when it hits them, it'll go south to uh, Boise right here, and, uh, and here's Pendleton. If it goes south, it hit Pendleton. If it goes, uh, sometimes the winds are turning in a spiral, then it'll pick it up and go to Seattle right there. Um, the, but there's uh, Cascade Mountains that will deflect it a little bit, so it'll go to Vancouver, maybe, if it's deflected, but a big storm will yank it right into Seattle, and then it'll bring it to Eugene, Oregon, as it comes around like this. Hey. But then that spiral will move across America, and it'll hit Chicago, and it'll hit Washington, D.C., and New York, yeah. and then it'll go across the Atlantic, and in 26 days to 30 days, it will have gone around the northern hemisphere and returned to here. So that's it. How do? What do we do? We have two and a half minutes to tell them. Okay, what, to what do you got to do happens. is get this shut down as soon as possible by having your congressperson uh, be aware of the danger of that and that they were granted their operating license uh, incorrectly and there was not the fault lines mentioned and uh, they should look at. Um, the group of it's already been acknowledged. They even acknowledged it. Yeah, and Physicians for Social Responsibility put together many of the reports and got a geologist to analyze this, and he's an engineer, and he's from Kennewick, and he uh, says it. The uh, ma their application did not include the things, and that from the application, the engineering of this power plant will not withstand the earthquakes that are expected. And Great. So we are in danger, all the northwest, of fallout that's radioactive. And the people of Fukushima area were hard hit, but we in America got seven days after Fukushima, we got the fallout coming to Oregon. Um, so then uh, I want to point out this. I kneel is the next thing to worry about. There's like a couple, like four, they keep it secret. It's the Idaho National or Nuclear or Navy uh, uh 
Laboratories, I Neil, it's called, and it changes its name, but it may, may basically is run by the Navy for training people in operating nuclear reactors, which they use at here, Bangor Nuclear Submarine Base. These can be sloshed in the tsunami expected from the uh, Cascadia oh my God. and Seattle's right there. So take your pick. That's it. Get Congress to shut off that nuke. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know about that. So Seattle is toast if they if those things are there when there's an if earthquake. If the wind is blowing that way at that time. But I mean, if we have an earthquake and they have their nuclear submarines there, see, Seattle's toast. Yeah, and and because what is this, what this, is this submarines thing Mount Rainier going to do when the plates go shoving themselves into the goo? You know, it's probably going to. What do the people do? What do people do in a nuclear fallout? What do we do? Stay inside. For a few days and then go out and no, get the heck out. You and stay leave. inside for a long time. For how long? Um, Two weeks. Well, it depends. You can uh, find out how fast the wind is blowing, and then you'll know how fast it'll get to you. You should know how far you are from Hanford, um, and then you look at the weather reports right then on your computers and on your phones, and you see what direction the wind is blowing, and then you and they'll and then you look it up on a fancier weather report for the speed of the wind and then you'll get your own thing don't trust the government for telling you you're safe they don't want to be held responsible so they it's the department of energy that runs it wow really. and so they will not um they have don't i it. believe changed no. some of the wind reports about hanford so that you don't think it's going to go to really Spokane, but have they does. already done that they've already done that well i've been looking for um like the the um wind reports over the years so that we can see how many times in a year does how many days in a year does the wind go from hanford and the columbia basin here over the cascades and and this is wenatchee right there yeah then snoqualmie pass and then it comes down into Ren renton and into seattle so when does it do that how many times it does do that and people who know how to Google it. Go find your weather reports if you live anywhere in the Columbia Basin. Like, here's Spokane, here's Coeur d'Alene, here's Spokane. Yeah, I see what you're saying. And these are all Indian reservations. Um, I don't even like to call them that, but that's what they are. And so I Nations, was, aren't they separate nations? Yeah, but there are government making the native folks be downwind yes. of their project. Yes. And it's not fair to keep tormenting these right. noble people who have this as their beautiful place of fish. And salmon of the old days. And look what we did with it. Like, we really, we're like... Disgustingly A nuclear a disaster yeah. for the entire There's fucking planet. seven nuclear power plants operating at Ineal. This is that how they say thank you? <laughs> yeah, I like... Thank um, you for letting us kick you off our land. Now let us fuck it up for the entire and planet. And use you as guinea pigs to see how you take the radiation that we spew out Mother occasionally Christ. from our radioactive... This is why I will not, Louisa, sites. I will not tolerate nuclear apologists on where this video is going to be. Okay, did we need to? So, uh, we're going to end here, you guys. Put your courage feet on, because this... And get a Geiger is, counter. Yes, and make sure you uh, have containers to put water in. So, and put water in them. And put water in them and change it up regularly. In an earthquake, okay. Ciao. It's like a ghost story. In the future, we'll look back and say, had that one opportunity in life, instead of making 4,200 peer review academic studies every day and locking them up in Elsfer, Springer, and Wiley's Ivory Towers, where they don't benefit anybody but a handful of corporations with human rights. We could have changed it, if we're lucky enough to have that future. And Max Fuel, 20 days after the tsunami, they were talking about how Max Fuel was 2 million times, 2 million times uh, more deadly than any other reactor on the planet. 2 million times. And so... Uh, Max fuel reactors are a lot bigger than a normal reactor on top of that. And so in comparison to Chernobyl, Max fuel is about 18 million times worse and toxic, deadly, just un unimaginably, inconceivably. 
And the video below about Chernobyl 3828, if you can sit through it, it's, uh, it's inside for the people that were in there with the shovels in their hands for 15 or 20 seconds and got their running. You know, we're, tw uh, we're 225 rem was what was your max dose you should get there ever for the rest of your life. And these people were running on top of uh, 800 or 8,000 and 12,000 with sneakers on. It's in that video below. It's documented from f photographers that went in there and shot all these pictures of all these people. They were sending like 10 people in at a time. They had 10 or 15, 20 seconds at a time to run in, pick up little tiny pieces because if you picked a big piece, it would the, the x-rays would just fry you right there on the spot and then everybody would have to step over your body. And so they had these little shovels and they do, They were giving them instructions a hundred times a day, this group of 10 and 12 people, and they would just run as fast as they could. And you would need something like um, probably 30 million people in comparison to the 600,000 to the million that done Chernobyl and changed it. You would need 10 and 20 and 30,000 at least to go into Fukushima trying to do that routine. And every robot they brought in there malfunction immediately and they still even today can't build a robot that can go into those buildings that you're looking at. Now they built a sarcophagus around that building <laughs> show and tell. They've been fabricating videos about Unit 4 and you can't get in Unit 4 even if it is still standing. We don't know. You can't believe anything they said. All they've done is lie for almost a thousand days. And when you took into the equations of the models that they use for just two weeks dispersal into the oceans, not diluting, because that's the biggest fabrication, that's as bad as a banana as background radiation compared to an isotope that will kill you. It's like using airplane radiation to an isotope that will friggin' kill you and your loved ones and float around for a billion years and kill somebody else if somebody else comes back and visits this creature we've created now where the entire Pacific Ocean in two years is going to be dead and not only that it's going to produce these storms that are unimaginable because the ocean itself is a big battery now it's the, literally exactly that a battery but a battery that keeps producing too much charge so ultimately you're going to end up with all the clouds that are full which are now are, are, are bringing all of this isotopes all over the place really fast. It's not just the currents. It's not this current that takes six years to kill the entire ocean in the model based upon a two week dispersal when there's 300 to 400 tons of medic going in there every day and that there's 4.3 billion gallons a day running over the three melted cores. And one of those, two of them, one and two are nine times Chernobyl's each because they're not counting the pool on the, on the roof of it. Unit three was the MOX fuel, not counting the stuff on the roof of it. Not putting that into the equation. Do you see the roof there? Do you need somebody to say there's no roof there for you to look at that picture and say there's no roof there? Do you need that? Because I don't. And these were 10 story buildings. And so we don't even need them into the equation. We don't even need the MOX fuel into the equation. All you need is that unit one. That's nine times Chernobyl. That's actually three times bigger than Chernobyl. And Chernobyl's only a 30% meltdown. That's 100% Nobody knows outside of 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures coming out of this. And so the rods that are on the edge there that nobody can ever get into, you won't see anybody in there hanging there from scaffolds. You're not going to see anybody in there with torches. You're not going to see any kind of construction crew in there scratching their head with a measuring tape. For at least 100 years, they should be building a sarcophagus over that and then wait for the radiation to come down times 10. And maybe, just maybe, you can build a robot and go deal with that. Because what you hear about uh, is nothing, is literally nothing. And Japan is, has closed down the internet, an absolute betrayal of humanity. Because we all, we're all in this together, whether we like it or not, whether we like each other or not. For different life on this planet, uh, every species on this planet is in this together. This is every species. This is an um, extinction event already for the Pacific Ocean, period. And it's an extinction event for anything within 500 kilometers of the coastline because of the typhoons that are going to be three and 400 miles an hour that are going to eat 
every tree and every rock and turn that into a projectile, just like we've seen in the Philippines. Where that wasn't 195 mile an hour winds, that was in 195 mile an hour of projectiles for hours that barbarized everything in that country. Inconceivable. It shouldn't even be on this planet. 100 mile wide F4 tornado is what tore up. A tornado shouldn't be a quarter mile wide. It should only go for three or four miles at best. This creature just recently destroyed the Philippines. Everything that's, there's nothing left standing there. Think about Canada having that happen, or the United States have that happen, every building knocked down. Do you get it now? And that the water that washed over, there's a study come out was radioactive, which is what I've been saying since that happened. But a study came out yesterday about that, last night. And then there was a study about how Japan is going to have 6,000 kilometers of solar panels on the moon. Not in my time, you're not, I can assure you. You're never ever getting off of this planet. And if you can put 6,000 kilometers of solar panels on the moon, you can take all that uranium and plutonium and strontium and the 1300 weaponized isotopes that you got down there, got nothing to do with power. Got nothing to do with power. You don't need MOX fuel to make power. It doesn't make power. There's no generator on the edge of that plant. That's what reactor ones and twos are for. Reactor three was weaponized making these exotic isotopes that they can use in uh, weapons that can destroy communities and laser weapons and stuff like that. That's exactly what that's for. And for the future space engines, which they're never getting off this planet on. We can assure you that. The 4,200 peer review academic studies that your loved ones produce every day, that your tax is paid for. That, that's 1.6 billion hours, man hours a year at 1,000 hours per academic study. Think of each academic study, three a minute, a thousand page academic study produced over three or four years by your universities, by your professors, by their students, by their laboratories that you paid for. You paid for the lights, you paid for the heat, and it's locked up. I'm yelling, I know. It's locked up in Elsewhere Springers and Wileys, Ivory Tower. Who the hell are these people that get the copyrights on our academic peer review studies? Because I'm sick of it. Every time I get, to, I want to look up something, I'm blocked. I got to pay ten thousand, or a thousand, or five hundred, or fifty thousand bucks just to browse those sections that our taxes paid for every year. Thirty-five million dollars in billion in, in Canada it goes to Elsewhere Springer and Wiley's Academic Ivory Tower behind a locked door. We need forty-two hundred peer-reviewed academic studies every day working on Fukushima till the end of time. If we, if that was a meteorite coming at us. Every university on this planet would be working on it, right? Well, it's a meteorite coming at us. It's worse than that. It's a meteorite that never goes away. That creates all these supercells. With, you know, even just at 200 mile, we'd be so lucky in the near future to have just 200 mile an hour winds full of projectiles. We'd be happy with that in the near future. I'm not, I won't be the least bit surprised to see a three or 400 mile an hour one show up any day now at all. Anywhere from here to Japan, at least, and Japan too. We don't know what happened to Japan. We don't know if those typhoons wiped out most of Japan. Nobody knows. Nobody can confirm that. Nobody can deny that. Nobody can debunk that. Because uh, Japan has one one thousand of one percent of the population on the internet. And they don't talk about Fukushima. At all. And then we have the propaganda machine from AP and writers trying to feed you same story in every outlet you go to. You'll get the exact same story with the exact same picture and the same boring paragraph. And that's why you're here tonight. Because you're sick of that. And you want to get it. And I don't know if we'll ever get the true implications of what we... But we can easily look at what science says would happen in these environments. Like on other planets where they have these supercells where they have these lightning storms that go from the ocean up to the clouds but the clouds will light up in the future in the very near future in the pacific ocean because they'll be full of isotopes and if they're whacking that with the lasers or who knows what we don't know what these creatures are capable we know what they're capable of it there's five million orphans in afghanistan there's twenty-seven thousand children dying every day dysteria diarrhea pneumonia and bill gates 
cured a billion people from ever uh, getting polio. But there's only 600 people a year get polio. 27,000 children die every day, so we know what they're capable of. The GMO has no nutrition in it. Go look it up. You need a truckload of corn just to get the same amount of calcium in a single organic corn on the cob. You gotta eat, I'm, not I'm talking a pickup truck, 480 pieces of corn to get the same amount of calcium. You need like 129 pieces of corn, of GMO corn to get the same amount of potassium. And you need around 59 GMO corn to get the same amount of magnesium that's in a typical organic corn on the cob. Because they engineered the nutrients out of it. And then they engineered in glossophates, and, which are known carcinogens, which is the basis for uh, Agent Orange. Nine years of chemtrailing Vietnam. We're a sick and demented society beyond imagination. We're a willing slave to our own self-destruction, our own self. We're killing ourselves anyway with the GMO. We're killing ourselves with the 65,000 unregulated chemicals every day. That has invaded every aspect of your life. That's in your makeup, that's in your hair, that's in your products, in your clothing, it's in your materials, that's leaching out these nanoparticles. We'll get to the membrane of your lungs, to the membrane of your brain. And then your body will attack that. And you'll have tumors and stuff like that from that. The nanoparticle is the worst thing ever introduced besides nuclear on this planet. It's insidious how it works. It should never be loose in the wild, ever. They need to create technology like that anyway, they know that, in order to deal with what's coming at us, that they can't deny much longer. They can't deny a dead ocean within two years, see? You can't get away from that. And you can't deny the fact that the seagulls are dropping dirty bombs all the time now. It's better than getting hit by a seagull in 195 mile an hour winds, I could assure you. <laughs> or 300 miles an hour winds, that's common. It'll rip up the pavement. There'll be nothing left standing wherever it bangs. Just like the Philippines. No difference. That's why it existed. That's why that peer review study just came out about the radiation and updated that communities. Remember the boats that went up in those communities? That had at least a 35, 40 foot. Um, you know, even when it's empty, it needed 35 foot of water underneath it. I used to go down and inspect these holes. And so I used to always have to get them to turn off their sonars and everything else because I didn't want to get beat up underneath the boat. And it's usually like an hour and a half job to swim under these boats and check all, check the whole hole of the boat. And so when I seen the boat sitting up there in the middle of a community, I understood how much water it takes to drag those boats into those communities. <coughs> and when I see the pictures of the Philippines with, with all those projectiles at 195 miles an hour and how it leveled everything, and how bodies were found so many miles away, it's, it's inconceivable. And see, like I say, an F4 tornado would only do things five and six miles, and so that was considered extraordinary. Well, you should see what traveled hundreds of miles in the Philippines. It'll blow you away. It did. Tractors. It's just amazing that anybody even survived that. And the true carnage might never be known for another year. There's so, much, so many people missing and just destroyed. It's like inconceivable that that's going to happen again and again and again right around the entire Pacific. So when is it, when are people finally going to admit that we got to do something smart here? Are we just going to let this go until it goes in and whacks Florida? Or Vancouver, Canada? Is that when you're going to finally say, oh, you know, that's a little odd. 300 mile an hour winds, knock down every building. Never seen that one before. Because most people would be dumbed down so much with the GMOs and this idiotic idiot tube and then all the 65,000 chemicals they absorb into their body constantly like makeup is toxic your cleaners and your cupboards are toxic that's toxic stuff you're only allowed to have you only you only got that because all the chemicals the 65,000 chemicals were grandfathered in in 1981 when the environmental protection agency hung up their shingle they grandfathered in every chemical they knew thousands of these were beyond toxics you know, Johnson & Johnson baby shampoo, they had to change their formula last year because it was uh, carcinogenic. And it's, it's going to take quite a while because they make a lot of it and they got a big factory and they got a lot of people employed and then it's hard to find another ingredient to make it work. Well, just take it out anyway, within time being, you would think, but no. It was like the vaccines or 
it was like that AIDS um, where they and where they they had AIDS in Bayer's aspirin, and there was millions and millions of doses discovered that had the AIDS virus in the liquid aspirin. And you know what they done? They shipped it off to the third world countries rather than destroy it. And people in those countries like China, where the executives who done that were actually executed. Nobody in America even got called out for it. The media doesn't want to um, doesn't want to distance themselves by you know asking a hardball question. They might not come back on their show anymore. Forget about journalism, the, the fabrication. The only time you see journalism is in the Hollywood movie. That's it. It's the only time you see uh, ethical journalism. And it's funny, they can't even say it with a straight face in a movie, see? Look, we, we, can't, we can't just walk away from what we know is coming at us and going to destroy so many lives every day that the fable uh, stays there. And they can't hide it much longer because of the, the ocean is going to die and it's going to have some already supercell storms, one or the other, in the next two years. One of them is going to blow the lid off this. They can't hold it in much longer, see? People are waking up at a big rate and they understand things. And all they had to do was open the pearly gates and let everybody come in and try to help them, but they won't let anybody go in there. And so they created this themselves. And so they gotta make sure they don't get off the planet in the future, because they're gonna destroy at least 90, 95% of the species on this planet. And it's not the radiation that mutates, see? You'll be lucky, you'll be so, so, so lucky if the radiation just mutates things wherever you live. You'll be so lucky that fish are going around with eight always. You'll be happy. You'll be like, that's pretty cool. I can live with that compared to what's coming to a lot of places because no one's getting an opportunity to deal with this. Who knows which university student can come up with a solution? I guarantee you it can happen. Particularly if it was a big meteorite coming at you and gonna, gonna just destroy your country or destroy your planet. If there was a 30 mile wide asteroid, look at the ice on how everybody right now, every video out there, I could have made a video and jumped on that wave if I wanted to, I should have probably. Because that's the kind of asshole I actually am, is where I will use another subject to get this subject out there and give it some more attention. In fact, I might just start doing that. Yes, indeed. Lady Gaga. Next time she hits the news, I'll come out with a Lady Gaga. Don't hate on me too much because I'm up to no good, you can be sure if you see that happening. Because that's how I roll, okay, dog? That's how I roll. Right now, I don't give a shit about these creatures. If I can use them to pump it out there, wake up more people, force their hands, and get all the institutions on the planet to go to work on the meteorite called Fukushima that's coming in every way possible because the troposphere, the stratosphere, through all the thousands of miles of clouds that form every day on the ocean, lug it all the way over here earlier than anybody ever wants anything to do with it. And how that, the, the, as we kill off the ocean, the migratory animals can't migratory anymore, like the birds and that, right? Or the mammals, they can't survive in that environment. There's no oxygen and it's radioactive. Radioactive means you stick your hand in there, you get burns within, like you can't undo those types of burns. These are vicious. And because they're flushing it out into the Pacific Ocean and how it aggregates with things so readily and how the oceans have been inundated with 90,000 uh, container ships. And I want you to think about that because that's so important uh, and I don't bring it up enough, is that 90,000 container ships and these ships, these are the ones with the 5,000, say, containers on it, transport truck, small containers on it, yeah? Okay, so there's 90,000 of those types of ships, and they burn bunker fuel. And bunker fuel is what's left over from the processing of fuel, of petroleum products. And it's supposed to go to a nuclear or a waste, a toxic waste site at around 1,800 bucks a ton. And so what they came up with a lot were these big ocean-going vessels that are bringing gadgets back and forth you can burn that. Now, the problem with it is it's not very efficient at all. It's like beyond inefficient actually and it should be on a toxic waste site but there's 90,000 of those ships out there and the resulting carnage that that creates is the equivalent of about 42 trillion people on this planet every day 
And so what they really, like 16 of them produces more pollution than all the cars on the planet. One of them produces more pollution than all the cars in Canada, all the cars in New Zealand, automobiles in Australia combined, 50 million cars, vehicles. One container ship every single day is producing that. The animosity equivalent of. So 16 produces more pollution. Now, on a good side, because that's in the Pacific Ocean, and it, it burns very poorly, so you got all these particulates, unfortunately go, and fortunately go up into the atmosphere and into the troposphere and into the stratosphere. Bear with me. But it also acid, uh, causes the oceans to be acidic, right? But they blame it on us and our tin cans and our pop bottles and our little four-cylinder beaters compared to these 90,000 container ships that are on the ocean producing the same amount of pollution as 42 trillion people on this planet every day. So bear with me, because this is important. I said that twice, I know. Because it's twice as important, and I'm glad I remember to bring that into the conversation is all. And so I want to make sure I keep everything straight for you. And so what happens is uh, radiation likes to aggregate to certain types of particles. And because radiation, the isotopes and the gammas and the betas and all this is, is energy, then the particulates, the acidity of the ocean from the 90,000 ships to 42 trillion people on this planet every day, hopefully is aggregating a lot of that and probably has been. Not probably, is. But on a stranger note is that when you combine these unknowns with a known unknown, you might end up with a concoction much like uh, when you're spraying salt waters on the spent fuel uh, or the melted cores, you create a concoction of binding in the atomic uh, neutron atom sizes where they're able to contain a uranium or a um, uh, uh, plutonium or strontium, etc., etc., and then it becomes its own little nuclear engine. And then you need um, to think about how do you get something to be two million times more deadly? How do you how do you work that one out? Why would you work that one out? First off, it's got nothing to do with making power, but how did you get there? How did you get that to be two billion times? Uh, two million times more deadly than Mox fuel. See, and so that's the equation you really gotta research yourselves in order to comprehend. What just number three is all about. Not counting all, all of the missing full, uh, fuel pools above it, but just to keep it in the context of what we're actually talking about, two million times more deadly. That's not me, okay? That's the professionals out right after the first couple of months, and there was mainstream media all over the place, and of course they gave up on that, but they still mentioned it once in a while. And it's missing. The fuel, uh, the, the fuel pools above it are missing too. But just unit one is nine times Chernobyl. It's a hundred percent meltdown. Chernobyl is a thirty percent meltdown. They went through a million people. Right, it's serious stuff. So we need organizations, sense wise, of people. We want forty two hundred academic studies every day on this because if it was a meteorite coming at us, we would have forty two hundred peer review academic studies on that meteorite and how we're gonna deal with it, and the whole world would be packing their kids' lunches and sending them to college to deal with it. Because it'd have been a moral and ethical thing to do. And instead we got people like me gotta show up. Someone like me has to show up and say it. It's frightening to me. It truly is. And I don't want the job, same as anybody else out there. They don't want that job either. They're not supposed to have it. The media was supposed to do it, but the media has never told you anything in your life. It's sold its soul to read a teleprompter and get a Twitter account, as I like to say, to be polite. And so the people, the, the, the media is meant to sell it to you, whatever they're told on the, print, on the teleprompter. And that's what they do all day, these little sound bites all day long on the teleprompter. And they sell it with a smile and a $5,000 suit with dirty underwear. And, uh, and a deep closet full of skeletons. They keep selling their soul all day. I, couldn't, I can't sell my soul like that. I can't do that. Somebody can't come and offer me money. Somebody can't threaten me and change me.
that's not going to happen. I can't happen. I don't live that way. I don't think that way. I can't act that way. That's something that I've never done before and I have no intentions. I, I, I'm not going to have that as my legacy. And so everything I say is because I vetted it and everybody else has vetted it before, but then I vetted it myself. Because I don't read Fox. I go read the academic studies from Harvard and Yale and Berkeley and MIT and Stanford and Oxford and every scholar on the planet to make sure I actually got another narrative. Because I, the other stuff is so boring. At least when you read these academic journals, you have to go look up words to find out what the hell they mean and try to get them back into context. Because you're trying. I'm not saying I'm the scholar. I'm just saying I know all the scholars and I admire them. And I thrive on them. And that I'm worried that in the future we won't have that. And so we have to learn what we can learn now before something bad happens where it just goes the wrong way instead of the right way where we say, okay, there's a meteorite coming at us, let's deal with it. Otherwise we might have a whole country get destroyed like the Philippines. And so now that we pass that stage and we realize how many lies they truly told us and how hideous it really truly is and the fact that Mox fuel is missing and getting flushed out into the ocean all day every day, not counting the rainstorms and the snowstorms enhancing that, because of all the rods that are in the topsoil all over that site, which is one of the backup plans. And that, that that country is a hostage, that they are all victims to this creature that wasn't making power, it was making a military industrial machine, weapon. It just won't give it up. And now it killed up our whole planet. We gave up the planet so it could try. They should have like waited and got a planet and go try this nuclear weapons out, nuclear plants out on another planet. Never should have tried it on Earth. They knew better. There's no reason for that to be done on Earth. They knew that. Those people are, some of them are still alive about that. And they prospered because of that. And I'm not saying which they should be, they shouldn't be hanged in the streets because they knew better and they prospered off it and they know what's going on here and they kept silent. And they kept silent their whole friggin' lives. And the media still puts them up there. And so we can't, we can no longer uh, wait for the media to tell people and push this ethically in the right direction of let's take all of our institutions and find out how to have a real civilization for the last remaining part of our civilization. We come together as a civilization and we deal with what we got to deal with because we got no wiggle room left. The death plumes that have traveled across that ocean in just a matter of three days because of the jet streams traveling at 100 miles an hour, which is nothing. We'll still reach here in three days. And they don't, these plumes are real, right? That's the whole thing, you know. If it was a meteorite coming at us, I wouldn't have to make this video, would I? See? But because they're hiding a ray that, that, uh, army of meteorites that are coming at us from every single direction and uh, every aspect of our lives including the troposphere and the stratosphere for many years from the constant testing and not, not just testing because that's a different isotope it's just like look at all the bullets 5.5 million bullets a month in Iraq most of that was depleted uranium from, from uh, McAllister's bomb manufacturer in Oklahoma that's dirty bombs every one of those bullets is a dirty bomb and so every time you hear the media talking about dirty bombs, think of the irony where you went in other people's countries and fired millions. Just a month, 5.5 million rounds a month. Most of that is depleted uranium rounds. That's all McAllister makes. Just four of those bomb manufacturers in the United States trying to get rid of a, bi a billion tons of uh, yellow cake. And that's what you're doing with it. Do you think that's not going to show back up in your own country? All the nuclear plants are leaking into the ocean. On purpose, they build pipes out there because to, to, they don't want to release them to the community because you might kill a bunch of people in the community. You won't want, you know, if Chernobyl had to happen in the capital, their capital wouldn't exist today, right? There'd be nobody living there. It'd be a totally empty capital. See, and that could happen to you. That could happen, but does that already happen in Japan? Japan is a wasteland. It's a complete wasteland. You're supposed to dig up all of Japan and put it on a nuclear waste site by the nuclear regula re regulations. All the stories are there where all the radiation was found, which means the entire country is polluted. Of course it is. 
The typhoons are picking it up and spreading it everywhere. And it'll do that for a billion years. It ain't going to stop. All those isotopes releasing all that. These particles are everywhere. The big particles. The x-rays. The neutrons. There were 13 neutrons being absorbed. Uh, constantly, this kind of information is keep coming at you. So what do you need? You don't need nothing. I'm just saying it because you're here. I'm here. I'm just saying we need those 4,200 academic scientific journals every day trying to go after this meteorite called Fukushima. We can't wait any longer. We just can't wait any longer. The evidence is just stacked. Nobody needs any more evidence. Nobody needs it. Let me make that point. That we don't need any evidence. It's there. It's everywhere. It's all through the media now. There's a history of it almost a thousand days. People have covered it extensively. Almost every professor on this planet has spoken out. And your media stabs you in the back every single day. Just stabbing you. Stabbing you in the back every day. Cowards! When you, what's enough? When California's beer, because of a typhoon or a hurricane that had 200 mile wide eye and was traveling at three and 400 mile an hour winds and all these politicians are dead and all the celebrities are dead. Will you finally get it then? Will you finally admit it then? Probably not. No. Just a regular old storm. You should get them like that a couple hundred years ago. You don't know nothing, mister. No, because 4,200 peer review academic studies we paid for are locked up every day. We can't even solve our own problems. Because you keep locking it up all that secrets, all the information. All the terrorists will get it and use it. Take away your fucking freedom. But you ain't got nothing. You got no freedom. You're a slave. Beyond imagination. You have no concept of how far down the rabbit hole we truly are. If you think about anything right now, except to, you know, take care of that meteorite that's coming at us. Because there's a whole bunch of them. And we need everything on the planet working on that, period. Or there ain't going to be a planet to worry about. As it stands now, it's destroyed. You can't just kill a Pacific Ocean and expect it to stop there. It don't respect no borders. It don't respect any kind of... It's uh, the most indiscriminate thing you can ever imagine. The most vicious, violent, nightmarish thing. I would rather be invaded by aliens with lasers shooting at us. At least we had a chance. At least we would throw rocks. At least we can have that satisfaction before we, they took us down. At least we could try, see, before they they take us out. If you don't know, you can't. If you don't even try, how can you stop it? You're just looking up at that meteorite coming at you, and you just won't. Just what's on Fox? What's on CNN? What's on? See, I'm gone back 35 years, turning the dial on the TV. I grew up in a time when there was no TV. There was no radio. And that if you didn't shoot it, you didn't eat. There was no such thing as candy bars. There was berries. You, made. you didn't eat unless you went and got it yourself. And everybody's become so complacent, and they're stuffed now with all that GMO. They can't stop it. They can't turn it off. They're addicted to it. It addicts your brain. It takes over your body, your functions. And not only that, it changes you genetically. It makes you susceptible to the radiations because it makes you weak. It already creates the very habitat for the radiation itself to destroy you, to finish you off, to make you liquidate all your assets at the very end of it, just to try to get another couple of weeks of GMO supplements or GMO pharmaceuticals. And you give your babies GMO baby food and you give your pets GMO with no nutrients and toxins engineered into it. So you're being set up. And then 65,000 unregulated chemicals, you're being set up. For every, you're, you're just susceptible to everything and anything. And just think about that one where there's 2,000 CDC centers right across America. So if you get one of these 200 mile wide, the tra you know, F4, F5 tornadoes cruising through and wrecking all of these places for hundreds and hundreds and thousands of miles, that's coming. You can guarantee you can't turn that off if you don't try. And you can do it because you created it so you can, you can turn it off. If you created it, you can deal with it, but you got to try. The, 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 this peer review studies actually probably exist of how to deal with that. And they lock up 4,200 every day that are published. 
for fluff for corporations so they can get into space and leave us all here like the uh, movies, like the Hollywood projections. It's just a, it's not a game. It's, it's not nonsense. It's not fables, unfortunately, sadly, pathetically. What a, what a stupid time to be alive that we got to try to force this out into the public so that that beat meteorite, at least we tried to stop the meteorite before it smacked into us. Japan's idea of uh, doing that up there on the moon, put 6,000 kilometers of arrays up there so they can move all their prefab buildings up there so they can get off this planet too. They probably done it to us on purpose because they never told us, they never they won't let anybody in to help them. You know, you have to wonder, that not Japan, but the people that are down there, why, you know, why... We know there's going to be carnage down there. We, we get that. We've seen that from the tsunami. There's places that are radiated. You still can't get the bodies. We get that. So why not let us in there and deal with it and so the whole world can go to work on it? Because we will. There's nothing motivates the human species any more than an extinction level event. Period. And we have reached that plateau of all of our generations where we are actually capable of destroying ourselves and we are just as capable of surviving relatively intact, but you're gonna kill so you're gonna kill the entire Pacific Ocean. It's dead. You can't change that. You can cut it off right now, but that plume that's coming out is gonna fill up the ocean with just two weeks hemorrhaging. Not counting the numbers we're talking about, the real numbers that finally came out. So when is enough gonna be enough? When is enough gonna be enough? I say that point is getting close. And that's not what it should be. It should be 4,200 academic peer review studies published every day that gives us hope. Because we need hope, not the fear mongering that's coming. We need the hope that the world has put its back to the wall for one last push against something that can extinct the entire species on this planet. Like I said before, it wouldn't surprise me they're doing it on purpose, and so the species that are left over are acclimated to radiation, and they could actually travel in the space, because we can't, right? We can't travel in space without big tumors and destroying you. Males can't even go into space. They go blind. But if you had a, a, a generations of people born acclimating to very strong radiation, you might be able to come up with a few species and take along animals and everything else and go off to another planet. Very well might be able to do that. In fact, that's what you would expect them to do if they were going to try to do that because we, as a species, cannot deal with that type of radiation that's on our planet right now. This is not indigenous to Earth. 38 minutes. I'm sorry. It's just like every friggin' night, three nights in a row now, I sit here and yell at myself. That's all I'm doing. I'm yelling at myself the entire friggin' time. I know I am. I'm just yelling at myself. I do that all day. Just to try to get me to come up with something different. Of you know, if forty-two hundred peer-reviewed academic studies every day going to work on this, but everybody with that urgency, with that knowledge that you can't deny when you look up and you see it coming at you, right? That motivates you. I can guarantee you the Philippine people that don't have a word for rude that apologize in a car accident, even though they didn't create it, because that's their culture. There's two billion people online. The other five billion have no idea of this narrative or anything that we're talking about. You're the fortunate ones. You're the very blessed, the very few. Make no mistake about it. That have went down that road and realized and have made a determination. But most people don't get that opportunity. Most people don't have that comfort. Most people will be terrorized only at the last minute and in the wrong, without any hope, like the Philippines, without any chance, without any concept. And they probably still don't, because they're cut off from the world, and always have been. But it's, it's, it's up to the, the people that do have that 
to try anyway to inform people to give them the opportunity. When Japan tsunami happened, I put out a video and I warned people that if you got loved ones, dare to warn them. They just had a major earthquake and a tsunami's coming. It's not much. It might have been only a two or three minute warning if it did. If anybody did make that phone call because they seen the video and they weren't paying attention, that was just another way maybe they would get the message and they might make a, make a phone call to Japan and warn a loved one. Or they might be in Japan. Who knows? Because I have a lot of people from all over the world and certainly have some from Japan. And so that was the idea of that first video. The second video was about depleted uranium because I understood the plant was in updated with water. And so I made a video to explain to anybody that was listening, you know, my, my, what, deplete, what the depleted uranium meant to me in context and how scary this was all of a sudden. It wasn't as if the horror of that tsunami wasn't enough. I was broken hearted when I made that video. I remember that distinctly. To this day, I'll never forget that moment that I scrambled. It was a terrible video, but I threw it out there in the hopes that somebody would just see the headline and scramble for their telephone and maybe save another life. And I do that every day. Because it's, you got no choice, because the media won't and can't. And I'm scared that they will, sadly. It wouldn't be like that, though, if it was a meteorite, because everybody else would be able to come out and say, look, you know, we're coming after two, and we're going to deal with it too. And you, you have this. Uh, we will come together for one last, for the only time in our life, in our history, as human species on this planet. We will come together for that one thing. We'd murder each other every day, but for this one extinction-level event, we would all just drop our bigotry and our racism and our devoids, our paradigms that we slip away and ignore the realities for one more day of ignoring the realities that you will never escape. Well, this one, you will never escape it. You can't escape it. And if it was a meteorite, we wouldn't have this conversation ever because everybody would be on ball trying to come up with fascinating ideas and concepts and everybody buying telescopes to see what they can add to it because you know the countdown timer is on. You don't get a countdown timer with a hundred mile eye typhoons that are definitely knocking 235 miles an hour. Imagine something traveling in that wind at 235 miles an hour and how it wrecks the building and picks all that up too at the same time and picks up the next building. And all that is airborne particles, uh, projectiles for hundreds of miles. You know how you put your hand out the car window? You put your hand out your window there, it'll tore off your arm immediately by the, by the stuff that's in that wind. And the future is much more of that. And so the urgency is very real because uh, that's real what happened to the Philippines, okay? That should never exist on this planet. It should only exist on Mars. On Mars. Folks, um, once again, I'm going to end up catching up on the comments after. It's been a long day. And it's how many days? I don't even know. I don't even care. 30, 29, whatever. So many days in a row. And that all day long, this, it's just more coming at me. And so why ain't, you know, why ain't we at least trying is my question. You know, the ones that are here every night understand what I'm saying. But the ones that are not here and can make a difference regularly and watch this, right? that's the question you have. You have to ask yourself all the questions I ask myself tonight because that's what I'm really doing here. I'm asking myself these questions of why. I got to be here. Why, why do I got to do this? Why does anybody else in the community out here got to do this? Why don't we have all the, the intelligent people organizing and pushing back properly? Because... Somebody doesn't want us to. Somebody doesn't want us to. Somebody wants this all to go the worst way possible. And it's not about money. It's about hitting this. It's about killing people. It's about population control and where whatever's left over will get them off this planet onto another planet and they'll take it from there and they'll take all those peer review academic studies with them to ensure that the next generation will be just drones 
and only their family members would rule those planets. Because otherwise they would be trying to save this planet and in order to save their futures. So, they, so we know that that's literally what they're up to is eventually force us to create the technology to get off the planet sooner than later. 45 minutes, I'm going to give it up. I'll say hi, i say goodbye to a few folks. Starlight, Irene and Rail, see I can't even pronounce that yet, so two nukes. Lori, hi, Nuber Magic, what's up dog? Always so happy to see you man. Um, Albert, folks there's links under my video, video. hi baby mama. Kurt K. I should have come over earlier, I know. Moments, nothing more. I see Miss Milky. Hi, Miss Milky. Big smiles. We see Third Watch. Cucumber. We got some big names here. Lunar. Uh, Jester. James. Domine. Hey. I see. Uh, hi, baby mom again. Um, yeah, I know, folks. I know. I'm going to read these comments after tomorrow morning. I think I'll wake up. And I'll sit there and I'll, I'll smile. Hi, Jen. Once again, camshaft. Lori. Uh, hang on. Charles, hey. And I'll scroll down and see a few more. Hi, Bill. Dwayne. Robert. You guys are so awesome, folks. See, I'm starting to feel better already just looking over here. I'll probably read these again tonight. Just to wean me around. Hi, Kuti. Q U W E. Can you pronounce it? Uh, I'm just going to scroll down before we give it up. Nubu Magic. You got some good videos, man. You're awesome, but we really appreciate the things you do. They're all treasures. Make no mistake about it. Uh, no, no GMOs. 33.3 DFG, I think it is. Hi, Daisy. You're a prop, David. I'll come up to the top and say hi to anybody that showed up. Missing Sky. Yeah, thanks, you're, you're a prop. And everybody else, I'll, I'll read your comments after. I think I might do another Fukushima comedy show so in the next couple of days because I've been writing my own jokes this time. And I'm going to get some soundtracks. Probably going to get in trouble. So that's all I can tell you right now. Going to get in trouble. <laughs> I look forward to it, actually. I look forward to the murderers in the comment section saying Fukushima's fine. Killing more people every day. The PR firms that are murdering people and all the. We say goodnight to them too, and hopefully they come to their senses and come out as whistleblowers. And tell the truth about what you're doing, how you're they're murdering people in the comments section against your will, how you realize how evil that is. And uh, tomorrow night we should talk about how they're going to grow food on the moon. By 2015. Gee, I wonder what's the rush. <laughs> They're going to make special... I don't know. It's pretty crazy. That was the headline last night. The Americans going to grow food on the moon by 2015. Look up the headline. And then you got the Japanese are putting all those arrays up there. Right? You should bring all that plutonium up there first. But hey, that's just me. Take care, folks. I'll see the comments after. And... Uh, We'll catch you again tomorrow night, live, of course, and roaring. We need to get subscribed and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the remix button, hit the remix button. That way you'll have this video and, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad.